so uh, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, who are watching us live through uh, our Facebook page. Uh, welcome to the ABI talk show. My name is Oi Som Po. Uh, I am a research associate at the Mekong Center for Strategic Studies and of the Asian Vision Institute. And I will be the moderator of today's talk show. Today, ABI talk show will be focusing on the outcome of the consultative meeting on ASEAN humanitarian assistance to Myanmar. Uh, to denote on the 6th of uh, on the 6th of May 2022 his excellency Khan, deputy prime minister minister of foreign affairs of in and international cooperation of cambodia and asian uh, uh, sorry and the asean chair special envoy to myanmar with his excellency uh, dato lum chok hui secretary general of uh, asean in the capacity of asean humanitarian assistance coordinator had co-chaired the consultative meeting on ASEAN humanitarian assistance to Myanmar in Phnom Penh, Cambodia in a hybrid format. The consultative meeting was initiated by Cambodia as part of the implementation of the five-point consensus that was proposed by the ASEAN member states in dealing with the Myanmar crisis. In this regard, the consultative meeting underlined many key issues, from the framework of the humanitarian assistance to the challenges that could undermine the efforts of all actors involved. Uh, in which we will be discussing with our guest speaker today, Dr. Ching Wan uh, the president of Asian Vision Institute, who is an expert in, on the Myanmar crisis. Uh, Dr. Wan will share his professional perspective on the framework, the challenges, and other relevant matter in regard to the consultative meeting on the humanitarian assistance to Myanmar. So good afternoon, Dr. Wan A very good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, but before we start our discussion, I would like to inform our audience that at any point during the discussion, if you have any questions concerning to the topic, please kindly drop them in our Facebook Live and I will bring them to our speaker. Thank you for your kind cooperation and without any further delay, I would like to start our discussion. So first of all, Dr. Wanner, uh, regarding the consultative meeting on the ASEAN humanitarian assistance to Myanmar, uh, what were some key significant outcome from the meeting? And in your opinion, what should be the next step in achieving the said outcome? Uh, thank you, Zongpo, for uh, having me today uh, for a special talk show on the outcomes of a uh, multi-stakeholder consultative meeting on humanitarian assistance to Myanmar. Uh, looking at the press release by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Cambodia, uh, highlighting several uh, outcomes, including uh, the steps, a kind of practical steps toward the delivery of uh, human assistance uh, to different regions uh, in Myanmar. So according to the meeting, I think they identify five areas or regions in Myanmar, uh, kind of priority areas, uh, including Kaya, uh, Kayin, uh, Magway, uh, Saigang, and Bago. So these are four, uh, kind of five uh, priority areas that uh, uh, humanitarian assistance will concentrate on. And of course, the um, uh, facilitations of this uh, humanitarian assistance uh, need to be uh, carried out uh, between uh, AHA Center of ASEAN. Uh, humanitarian uh, assistance center or ASEAN together with uh, the local uh, uh, organizations, the national task force of Myanmar, plus the UN agencies and other local and international agencies that are working on humanitarian assistance to, to Myanmar. So that is the, um, the progress and the outcomes of the humanitarian uh, assistance to Myanmar. Uh, concrete step forward is to uh, ensure that uh, this delivery uh, will be inclusive uh, in a way that uh, other areas and region in Myanmar uh, will also get uh, kind of fair and, and, and inclusive access to humanitarian assistance because there are some kind of criticism or complaints that uh, humanitarian assistance have been uh, dictated by the, the SAC or the, the Tamadao, the military regime. So, so that is something that I think as a, a special envoy of ASEAN, as a chair of ASEAN this year, Cambodia have been working very hard uh, to ensure that 
uh, humanitarian process is, is inclusive and it will deliver to uh, those in needs in a very fair and just way. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Vandrat, for your insightful answer and your concrete um, uh, explanation regarding some challenges to the, uh, to the humanitarian system on the ground. So to follow up to that, I want to ask, um, since you mentioned the, uh, some challenges regarding the underground field, so what about AHA Center? Uh, there were some questions uh, regarding the capacity of AHA Center. So uh, in your opinion, what are some challenges to the AHA Center and how can we overcome those challenges? The AHA Center, we need to understand the history a bit of AHA Center. It, it was created to respond to natural disasters. AHA Center is not designed to respond to conflict zones to uh, this kind of uh, uh, war zones, you know, uh, fighting violence and a political crisis and so on. Uh, because the nature of crisis in Myanmar is not a natural kind of crisis or disasters. Uh, it is a man-made disaster uh, created up, I think it, it's formed after the coup uh, in uh, uh, um, 2000, in early, uh, 2021. So it has been more than one year, and this coup created this kind of humanitarian crisis uh, all across Myanmar, plus uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So that is kind of a, a natural phenomenon uh, when it comes to the pandemic. Uh, but the multiple crisis that are uh, happening or occurring at the same time in Myanmar create this environment much more complex in terms of humanitarian crisis and assistance. So AHA in terms of capacity and expertise have its limits, you know. Uh, that's why it requires to work with the uh, UN agencies because the, the UN agency have a broader knowledge, broader network, more local knowledge and so on. So, so they are more, uh, how to say, more efficient and effective in a way in terms of uh, delivering uh, humanitarian relief to, to this uh, conflict zone because the UN uh, uh, agency have long experience and broad experience in the conflict zone, humanitarian crisis during conflict and political crisis. So that is the, the big plus uh, uh, for, for ASEAN, uh, for AHA Center to work with the UN agencies, a uh, very important actor. Uh, and of course, AHA is constrained by political uh, kind of uh, system because it is a uh, kind of intergovernmental organization in a way. Uh, so we need to go through all official channels. So when you go to official channel, uh, you need to pass the SAC. Uh, the, the, the military regime now in Myanmar is a gatekeeper that, that rules the country. So everything needs to go past the SAC, right? Uh, because it's the official track. So that's why there are some suggestions that we need to be more innovative, uh, kind of think outside the box a bit, uh, beyond AHA Center, of uh, what we can do more and how to be uh, not so much uh, restricted or constrained by this official track, right? Uh, because uh, whatever we do is for the people of Myanmar, uh, for those in needs. So we need to be more creative, innovative, avoid this kind of uh, bureaucracy, uh, political complexities, uh, whatever we do is for humanitarian purpose. So that is uh, the limits of AHA Center. And I, I hope AHA can learn uh, and build its capacity from, from what it's uh, dealing with in the, uh, with the situation in Myanmar. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wan Um To follow up to that, you mentioned uh, the, uh, how the United Nations uh, assistant can help. So there were also some mention regarding the role of partners in uh, vaccine distribution in the outcome. In regard to that, I want to ask, um, other than uh, just uh, the UN, what kind, uh, what other area can the partner help uh, in regard to the five-point consensus and especially in distributing the humanitarian assistance? Well, uh, we we seen at the multi-stakeholder consultative meeting the representative from dialogue partners of ASEAN, because the dialogue partners first they have resources, right? Uh, so that is very important. Second, they have their own expertise and network. Uh, 
if we can mobilize all these resources and uh, build synergies of these networks, knowledge on the ground, uh, need assessments, uh, stakeholder analysis and engagement, and stakeholder partnership building, and so on. So that would uh, uh, optimize uh, the resources, available resources uh, uh, that we have uh, in order to support the people of Myanmar. So the best way is to build a multi-stakeholder partnership or stakeholder engagement strategy uh, so that we can optimize this kind of resources. Um, that is the best uh, scenario. So that's why the ASEAN need to work with the UN and the dialogue partners and also international and regional and national uh, non-state actors, uh, NGOs, grassroots organizations, uh, because the grassroots organization here, they, they understand the situation much better than the outsiders, you know, um, the, the needs assessment. Of course, in the joint statement, the press uh, release, uh, it also mentioned need assessment analysis on the on the need. Uh, that is very important because it, it we, we need to understand what are the needs on the grounds so that we can uh, effectively respond to those needs. So that is very important knowledge, a uh, local knowledge. Uh, that's why they need to work with the grassroots uh, organization in order to understand the needs. And of course, they need to work the, uh, uh, in partnership with the local grassroots organization. Of course, some of them are not registered in the government. It's a volunteer networks, a youth network, and local community networks. These are uh, important network on the ground. And of course, the dialogue partners I mentioned earlier are very important. Uh, we need to bring in uh, their voice uh, and their resources and figure out uh, uh, innovative partnership building in order to impact positive changes in order to optimize the resources that we have. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Um, so you, you mentioned a lot about challenges on the ground. And I would like to touch up on two points uh, because there was specific mention and there was specific present in the meeting. So from the cons uh, consultative meeting, there was like a heavy reliance uh, on the cooperation of Myanmar Task Force and the Ministry of Health in Myanmar uh, in laying the groundwork for the Aha Center to deliver the humanitarian needs for the people. So in this regard, um, by just that two or more um, ministries, what could be the biggest challenges on the ground uh, in cooperating with the ministries and the task force in achieving the set point by the outcome of the consultative, consultative meeting? Well, uh, practically speaking, uh, we need to work with SAC, uh, government agency, including the National Task Force, Ministry of Health, and other government agencies. And the National Task Force itself, it, it needs to coordinate among different uh, agencies at the national and sub-region, sub-national levels, local levels. Uh, but the, the problem of, of the, the task force and the ministry is it, 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 it belongs to the SAC, you know, uh, the government SAC, which of course politically bias institutions. Uh, so that, that is a, the challenge. How to ensure that uh, the work uh, to be carried out by the Myanmar National Task Force will reflect uh, the whole spectrum of uh, those in needs uh, in Myanmar. Otherwise, the, the, the humanitarian assistance will be used to strengthen uh, the legitimacy of the SAC, which is a political, can be a political agenda of SAC, using the humanitarian assistance to uh, strengthen its legitimacy, regime legitimacy, which is created or formed after the coup d'etat. Uh, so in other words, uh, as they need to be very careful as well, uh, in order to be not to be manipulated politically, manipulated by the SAC or by the military regime in Myanmar. So what we are doing now is for the people of Myanmar, uh, we, uh, it, with the consideration of the principle of inclusiveness, uh, political inclusiveness. So uh, any factions, uh, we do not care uh, as long as there are need, we need to respond to those social need, uh, humanitarian need. So that is something that we need to, to work toward that inclusive 
humanitarian assistance. The word Myanmar led and Myanmar owned that Cambodian chair has proposed and implemented so far, it doesn't mean that it is the SAC led or SAC loan uh, owned. It, we need to understand the definition of the people of Myanmar. Who are the people of Myanmar? There are different political factions, uh, different groups uh, across Myanmar, different ethnic group, political groups across Myanmar. It's not only uh, the Tamadao, it's not the military regime alone. So that the definition of Myanmar led and Myanmar own. And it seems that the SAC politically manipulate this term by using this term to dictate uh, the process of humanitarian assistance to Myanmar, which is not uh, in compliance with the spirit of ASEAN, uh, with the spirit of Cambodia as a chair of ASEAN. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wander. Uh, so I got a question in Facebook, and I think it uh, really encapsulates with what you have been talking about. So it is from Sreisra. Uh, she pointed out that recently the NUG has criticized Cambodia as the ASEAN chair for having no contact with them and other ethnic resistance group. Uh, from your perspective, will the engagement with NUG directly from Cambodia help accelerating the process of humanitarian assistance in Myanmar or will it worsen the situation? This is the quiet dilemma situation that Cambodia chair is facing. On the one hand, they need to work with the SAC, the gatekeeper of the humanitarian assistance to Myanmar. On the other hand, they need to ensure that humanitarian assistance is inclusive by engaging different stakeholders, including the NUG, ethnic armed groups, and other different groups uh, across Myanmar. So this is a matter of sequencing. Uh, what you need to do first and what you need to do next. Uh, if we involve uh, NUG and other political groups uh, at the early stage, it may disrupt uh, the process of working with the uh, Tamadao, the military regime in Myanmar, because they still hold the key. They are the, the, the gatekeepers there. So this is very, very tricky, challenging uh, situation for ASEAN, uh, how to respond to this. So perhaps the pragmatic way is a, a gradually, a gradual step towards a more inclusive, but at this stage, working with the SAC first, uh, the national task force and then next step uh, we need to engage uh, different stakeholders in Myanmar including the NUG and other ethnic armed groups so that is the, the way forward but I think um, at this stage it's quite difficult because on because the SAC is very kind of stubborn in a way uh, they're not so much cooperative and uh, the level of uh, sincerity and cooperation from the SACs is very tricky and very low. I mean, uh, perhaps they, they try to man manipulate ASEAN process for its own political interest, which is to maintain its power and to enhance its regime legitimacy. So that is the interest of the Tamadao. Do they care much about humanitarian assistance? Maybe not so much. So that's why they use this humanitarian assistance as a, as a tool for to build regime legitimacy. So that is their political calculation from the SAC, from the Tamadao. But from us, ASEAN, we look from a different angle. What we are doing to Myanmar is to serve the interests of the people of Myanmar, regardless of their political affiliation of groups, right? So that is a different angle a different political interest and calculation between the SAC and ASEAN uh, position on humanitarian assistance. So that's why we need to be careful. Do not let the SAC manipulate this humanitarian assistance for its own political agenda. Yes, thank you so much, Doctor. That was really comprehensive. But uh, let, let's move on to a smaller scope. I want, I want to talk about uh, how there were a lot of emphasis on the arrangement, the challenges, and the COVID-19 vaccine administration. 
So from uh, Dr. Wanderl's perspective, uh, what other area of humanitarian assistance uh, should be focused on, should be covered before the trip is set in motion? Well, vaccination uh, is one of the top priority uh, because uh, Myanmar is not out of the woods yet in terms of uh, fighting against the COVID-19. Of course, Cambodia successfully uh, kind of uh, opened by safely open the economy and, and uh, travel. Uh, but Myanmar still uh, need to uh, fully vaccinate its population. First dose, second dose, third dose, and so on, right? Booster dose. So, so that is the challenge uh, Myanmar is facing. Uh, because of this political crisis, uh, it disrupt the whole healthcare system. Uh, especially in the early stage of fighting against the COVID-19. Uh, the, uh, the, the movement of uh, this kind of civil disobedience, it means the, uh, the public workers, public servants, boycotted and uh, protested to protest against the coup. So uh, the whole healthcare system was disrupted. The whole government institution, functioning of government institution was disrupted because of this crisis. So that is the the challenge Myanmar facing, and of course, to deliver vaccines to conflict zones. Logistics is the, is a matter of concern. How to deliver a vaccine to those conflict zones, uh, refugees, uh, internally displaced persons, and so on. So, so this is something that uh, a huge task uh, ahead uh, in order to de uh, deliver uh, vaccines to, to those areas. Uh, and of course, um, as I said, um, uh, uh, this can be one of the top priorities uh, as a humanitarian assistant uh, to, to, to Myanmar. And other areas is, in, may include food security, uh, water, you know, safe drinking water, and uh, women and, and, and children uh, in, in, in uh, conflict zones. In during crisis, women and children are the most vulnerable groups. So how can we design humanitarian assistance in a way that we can support women and children? And of course, what, uh, the future uh, kind of, uh, of uh, these children, refugees, uh, what kind of education support that uh, we need to do, for instance, uh, uh, nutrition for the children, also education for their future. So there are many things uh, uh, that we need to do at one, you know, multiple tasks at the same time uh, in order to support the people of Myanmar. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor. Um, so let I, so right now I want to broaden up the scope of it. So uh, a few days before this, on the second of May, during the Mete Cho Hon San video call with uh, Myanmar senior Ming Ong Liang. Uh, so Cho Hon San alluded to a possible second visit at the end of uh, a possible second visit to Myanmar by the ASEAN Chair Special Envoy at the end of this month of May. So, from uh, Doctor point of view, uh, what should be the focus of the next visit, and how do we incorporate the huge scope of the humanitarian assistance to Myanmar alongside with all the other point of the five point consensus? Well. Um... The, the challenge has been the lack of uh, sincerity on the size of the Tamada, the SAC. Uh, so far, the SAC has not hasn't shown a uh, kind of sincerity uh, and commitment, even respect to ASEAN and the ASEAN chair. So that is a challenge. And this lack of sincerity prevents uh, ASEAN effective engagements uh, in Myanmar or uh, ASEAN support for, for the Myanmar people. So that one need to be addressed. And uh, ASEAN or special envoy or chair of ASEAN cannot force Myanmar uh, to, to take actions uh, to implement fully and effectively the five point consensus uh, because it's not a binding in a way. Uh, the five-point consensus is voluntary implementation and enforcement. It's not binding. Even though the SAC doesn't implement 
ASEAN does not have enforcement mechanism uh, to, to uh, force SAC to implement the five point consensus. So that's why Cambodia take a quite pragmatic approach, a gradual approach, uh, step by step, because uh, things cannot be achieved uh, within this year or even next year. I think uh, the Myanmar crisis may take longer than expected uh, because of this complexity. It's about power, politics. Why the coup took place at, you know, by, uh, in the first place, right? Uh, because the military wants to maintain power at all costs. So this is about power politics and create all this political mess, uh, humanitarian crisis and create a headache for ASEAN and Cambodia as a chair ASEAN. So who created all this political mess? We need to understand that root cause and we can predict the future of Myanmar politics. It will be complex and the military will take all measure and actions at all costs to maintain power. So even though Myanmar may have election in the future, we don't know, but the military will remain a political actor, a dominant political actor in Myanmar. And how to root out this kind of uh, uh, the political role of military, uh, the Myanmar people themselves, we need to figure out how, how they can uh, separate military from politics. Uh, so that is the, the, the political dynamics there, domestic political politics there, that, which is complex. Now look at ASEAN, what can we do? Uh, next trip, special envoy. What we can do now is to provide humanitarian assistance to Myanmar uh, inclusively. Second, what they can do, how many more months to go before <laughs> Indonesia take our the chairmanship is create a certain degree of political trust uh, between different stakeholders in Myanmar. And of course, in order to build political trust, you need to have a talk, a conversation, talk about anything, anywhere, anytime. And what we can do, provide a platform for them, safe platform for them, different stakeholders in Myanmar to have a dialogue. So that certain degree of trust can be formed gradually. And as I said, it will be a, be a complex long-term crisis in Myanmar, and we should not expect to have a short-term solution to this. Uh, yes, thank you, Doctor. Um, a great follow-up to this question. Uh, I got a question from uh, Mrs. Samsu Thierwat on Facebook. Um, since this year, uh, Cambodia is taking up the ASEAN chairmanship. Of course, next year, it will be Indonesia. So. How do you think Indonesia can build up on Cambodia initiative, especially from the recent consultative meeting and the joint vaccination framework? Well, I, I think ASEAN has been a continuum from one chairmanship to another chairmanship is kind of a continuum. Uh, uh, keep, keep building up, kind of building blocks. You know, when we do construction, one block after another. So um, the best way to strengthen this continuity of building block is to have this ASEAN Troika. So ASEAN Troika mechanism meaning uh, the coordination uh, between the previous ASEAN chair, the current ASEAN chair, and the future ASEAN chair, right? So if Troika mechanism can, can be implemented this year, for instance, so Indonesia will be part of it and Brunei will be part of it. And if ASEAN Troika a mechanism can be implemented next year, Cambodia still be part of it, and then plus Indonesia and the future ASEAN chair, which is Lao People Republic. So, so this is uh, this is a mechanism that I think uh, we should uh, uh, strengthen, and it will set a, a kind of a good pre precedent for for ASEAN in future conflict prevention or conflict resolutions or any issues that uh, ASEAN is facing, we can apply this ASEAN Troika uh, to resolve um, uh, the regional crisis or concern. So um, what to expect uh, from Indonesia next year, of course, to build up on what Cambodia have done this year, uh, especially in the five point consensus, 
and need to move beyond that five point consensus. Perhaps next year, Indonesia will push for the uh, democratization or the return to democracy in Myanmar. Uh, democracy here, uh, you cannot talk about democracy if you don't have free and fair elections uh, with the participation of uh, all different political parties uh, in the competition to make sure that everyone uh, have a fair say, a fair competition in the election so that democracy can be uh, restored and consolidated our times. So free and fair election very important uh, element in uh, democratic uh, system. So that perhaps Indonesia will push that agenda in addition to uh, the, the five point consensus that we are trying to implement this year. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Manut. That was uh, really comprehensive and I hope it will help Indonesia in the future on what they were trying to push in the future when their chairmanship will be on track. Uh, so one more question. Uh, since right now, we just had a much needed consultative meeting discussing humanitarian need, uh, which is one of the most crucial points in the five point consensus. So uh, in your opinion, what others meeting should Cambodia uh, initiate uh, during this chairmanship to uh, further uh, strengthening the uh, visit, the later visit and so on? First, uh, I, I, I must uh, uh, commend uh, Cambodia as uh, uh, the special envoy for being transparent. Uh, the press release are uh, very informative, comprehensive, and very transparent, uh, do not, uh, how to say, do not hide uh, uh, what they have for conversation uh, with uh, different stakeholders in Myanmar, which, which is good. Uh, this kind of transparency need to be, con need to be uh, continued uh, because ASEAN partners, uh, ASEAN members, ob observers need to understand clearly what's going on so that they can contribute and participate. So um, uh, it's on the right track, uh, what, what the special envoy is doing, but it needs to uh, expand its, uh, this kind of multi-stakeholder partnership uh, when it comes to humanitarian assistance, or even to seek a kind of innovative uh, solution uh, to the Myanmar problem by inviting the other stakeholders, uh, uh, think tank communities, uh, research institutes, uh, uh, even some uh, consulting firms or different foundation that uh, they have program in Myanmar, for instance, uh, such as the Asia Foundation, uh, the Nippon Foundation, already included Nippon Foundation, uh, those kind of foundation, uh, different think tanks, uh, consulting firms, uh, control risk, for instance, uh, or humanitarian dialogue, it's non-profit organization. Uh, those kind of actor, they, they may have innovative ideas uh, in order to push the agenda forward. Because we need to think outside the box sometimes. And frankly speaking, uh, government institutions are not so much innovative because they are constrained by a political establishment. They are constrained by political culture. So they can have innovative solution or think outside the box uh, solution. So that's why if they can bring diverse uh, stakeholders in to the conversation, it may uh, lead to more innovative solution to Myanmar problem. Uh, yes, thank you, Doctor. Um, you, you mentioned the role of think tanks. Uh, of course, just like uh, Doctor, who is a very uh, famous uh, think tanker uh, regarding the Myanmar crisis. So um, I got another question in regard to think tank engagement. So from uh, say so, from observation, there seems to be less engagement and input from local and regional think tank uh, by the government of Cambodia. So do you think the role of think tank should be ignored or put more uh, into priority in the future? I just take an example of, uh, of how Indonesia handle the crisis in early stage. So CSIS Indonesia is a kind of well-known think tank in Indonesia, a convened meeting among think tankers across the regions and put forward a proposal 
that formed the five point consensus. So behind the scenes, there's the involvement of think tank uh, before having this five point consensus. At ABI, we have uh, 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 several kind of consultative meetings, closed door consultative meeting among uh, different think tanks uh, organized by the Asia Foundation. Uh, we also join and participate in uh, dialogue among think tanks across the region on Myanmar issues and ASEAN chairmanship and so on. So, um, so this is the uh, kind of platforms of Track 1.5 and Track 2 that we can utilize uh, in order to uh, give policy inputs and also to amplify what the Track 1 is doing. Uh, to share knowledge, uh, to share information and analyze the progress, monitor the progress. And, and based on that evaluation, we can better uh, implement the policy. So this is something that I think is kind of constructive uh, conversation, uh, multi-stakeholder uh, partnership. Uh, uh, as I said, the, the non-stake actor like think tank, they may have uh, broader perspective or innovative ideas uh, that can inject, uh, can be injected into the, the, the solution framework or systemic solution to the Mijana crisis. So ABI, uh, at ABI we, we, done, uh, we have done our best to support the Cambodia Chairmanship of ASEAN. We have several round tables and discussion and we publish a book on uh, priority challenges for COVID Cambodian chairmanship in also including regional security issues such as uh, Myanmar crisis. And uh, we, together with the uh, Japan embassy, have uh, organized several uh, closed door round tables on the political crisis in Myanmar as well. So all these uh, consultations uh, uh, matter and are very uh, important to the process uh, toward the comprehensive uh, solution to, to Myanmar crisis. Uh, so thank you so much, Doctor. Um, so finally, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Dr. Ching Manara for providing very insightful answers and sharing your perspective on the outcome of consultative meeting on the humanitarian assistance to Myanmar, which are especially crucial for Cambodia as ASEAN chair moving forward with dealing uh, with the Myanmar crisis. With that, we like we now come to an end of our talk show, and I would like to express my deep gratitude again to Dr. Ching Wanet for being our uh, honorable guest for today's talk show. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mai Sampo. And of course, our audience for spending our, uh, your wild view of all time with us today. And finally, thank you for joining us. I hope uh, we will see you again on our next talk show. Please stay safe and have a good evening. Um, goodbye. <laughs>